Hello everyone. Welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday, the 3rd of October. Today's topic, your all-in-one classroom tool, edubuncy.com. And your show hosts are Peggy George, I'm Lori Moffat, and Tammy Moore. Thank you to Tammy for doing the closed captioning. I'm going to turn the mic over to Peggy so she can introduce Chris from Buncey and Stephanie. Well, hello, everyone. And I always have to smile when we say, I say, good morning. And I forget that we have some amazing people joining us who are from other countries. And it's actually evening for them. So welcome to all of you. We're really excited to be able to share Buncey and EduBuncey with you today. And we have two wonderful presenters. We have um, Chris Del Basso, who is the marketing associate for EduBuncey.com. And he told me how much he loves what he does. So he not only gets to help promote um, the site and the tool, but he gets to learn from all the amazing teachers like Stephanie, who are are creating with it and then share those creations. So today we're going to be sharing some of those with you. He's been with Buncey since May 2014 and he said it's the connecting with the educators that is his favorite part of the job. So he's getting to see Buncey from the other perspective um, and to see what a difference it's making in classes around the country and the world. And it is a web-based tool, so it can be used anywhere you have a browser and an internet connection. Stephanie is a fabulous teacher. She's an elementary teacher. She's been teaching at Southold Elementary School um, since 2002. And she started her teaching in second grade, and then after five years moved up to third grade. She's grown up in that area, which is in um, the area of North Fork, North Fork uh, near Long Island. And um, she said that her school is a K-6 elementary school. And she's doing some amazing things in her classroom. And we're going to get a peek into some of them today. Reading, writing, and math workshops are at the heart of her classroom. And so you can see why she might want to be using some tech tools to integrate into that experience. And she works really hard to make her lessons applicable to the real world. So they travel around the world looking at differences and similarities among various cultures. And she's going to be sharing some of that as she shares her bunch of examples today. She says she's an academic enthusiast. I can relate to that. A cheerleader, a provider of feedback, a learner, and a constructivist, which means she wants to build knowledge from what the students already know. So she is also a Buncey ambassador. And that's why we get to pick her brain today and learn from her. So I want to say welcome to both. Chris and Stephanie, and we're going to go on to the newbie question. And Chris is going to answer this question and then begin their sharing. So Chris, talk to us about why you think digital visual presentation tools are important for students and teachers. Hi, everybody. I'm glad to be here. Thank you, uh, Peggy, Lori, and Tammy, for <coughs> allowing Steph and I to join you guys. And we are very, very excited. Um, so to get right to the question, uh, I think digital visual presentation tools are important for both students and teachers for multiple reasons. <coughs> really, it, um, it starts with engagement, uh, allowing kids to um, visualize what is happening in front of them and what they're trying to comprehend, really allows students to engage in the lesson and see a visual representation and then form a context around that uh, lesson and to really internalize all the information that they're being given. And then in another mindset, it kind of 
um, creates what we like to refer to as creatical thinking. And this is originally a thought that comes from Jason Oler. Um, but creatical thinking is the process of creative reasoning combined with critical thinking that really allows students to um, take a more in-depth uh, in uh, view of what they're learning for that day and then to really um, form a full context uh, around that, that lesson. So I think visual presentation tools help students and teachers achieve that because it puts the day's lesson into a broader uh, picture and helps internalize the information. Welcome to the new Bunsi Creation Canvas. I'm going to start by adding a background. You don't have to, but I always like to, so I'm going to find one that I like and drag it in. Then I can add my first item, and I want an animation. I'm using the search bar to find what I need and dragging that in. I can resize and rotate, and then I'm hitting the plus to add another item. This time I'm choosing a sticker and searching for stars. I can hold down the shift key and click to select multiple stickers and then drag them into my canvas, move them and resize to my liking. Then I want to add some text, so I'll move that to a good place and type in my new text to highlight the whole thing. I can change the color and font and I want that to be centered and bold and a little bigger and now let's add a YouTube video so I'll search out the solar system and drag in the one I want resize and make things pretty I might want to add in a QR code if I print out my project I can scan in the code and go directly to my Buncee so that's neat and finally I'm going to do a small drawing I'll adjust the pen thickness and choose a good color draw a little star and then hit done when I'm finished I better go ahead and title my project and then I can share the link to my project embed it on a website I can email it directly or get all social with Facebook, Twitter, etc. And then I'm done. Really simple, really fun. Um, so what is Buncee? Buncee is a creation and presentation tool. There are two Buncees. There's Buncee.com and then edu.buncee.com. So originally Buncee was created out of a need to communicate creatively. So the CEO, Marie Arturi, um, has a medical foundation uh, called the Daniela Mar Marie Arturi Foundation, which supports research for, um, for uh, which funds and, and raises awareness for the research of um, diamond black fan anemia, which is a disease that led to complications um, for her daughter and ultimately um, took the life of her daughter, uh, Danielle Marie Arturi. And so when Marie formed this, um, this research foundation, she had a lot of doctors and scientists working with her, and she wanted to create a kind of thank you card for all the work that the, that the doctors and researchers put in. So she created Buncee, and Buncee just allows you to um, combine web multimedia and personal multimedia with in-house design elements to kind of create any kind of digital shareable content. And so over the years, Buncee, Buncee itself has been around for about four years, but the education side of Buncee came into light when teachers came up to us at different events and, uh, and conferences and said, this is an amazing tool, can I use it for my classroom? And as we've had the pleasure to work with a lot of different educators, the tool really took its own shape and became edu.buncee.com. So that's why there are two different sites. And edu is the uh, teacher-specific site. <coughs> and that is um, available to teachers and students. And it comes with a full classroom dashboard management system um, and then uh, Google resources and some fun extra EDU related content. So that's why there are two different sites and EDU is the one that you want to join. Um, so why choose Buncee? Well, on top of it being a fun and great tool um, that's really easy to use and has an amazing team behind it, if I 
can brag about myself for a second. Um, Buncee really helps teachers in a lot of different ways. So here's a few different ways that we'd like to point out. Um, Buncee is great for meeting and exceeding the new media arts standards. Now, if you don't know the new media arts standards, uh, you can see here that this item is linked. And by the way, this entire presentation and any presentation you'll see today is um, from a, is a Buncee itself. <coughs> and so you can see in this Buncee, we've linked um, an item, and that goes out to uh, oops, wait, that goes out to the new media arts standards Buncee. And so this, um, basically the new media arts standards uh, has to deal with creating, responding, producing, and connecting content, uh, and then uh, formulating some kind of content in response to that. So there's a lot of different ways that um, the new media arts standards require students to kind of internalize and then respond and form a huge picture, uh, a broad picture, around what they're learning for that day. And um, Buncee really helps students understand um, different aspects of what they're learning <coughs> by allowing students to actively engage in their lesson and to uh, connect stickers with, with um, concepts and to um, think of new ways of recreating uh, already created items. And it really helps form a broad picture. Um, and that is here, and this presentation will be available to you guys, so included in this um, is the PDF to the National Core Arts Standards of Media Art PDF, so you can click on that and uh, read it for yourselves. Um, Buncee also helps improve literacy education, so that could be both uh, digital literacy, where students are learning to engage with tech tools like Buncee and use a uh, web-based tool. Um, and it also deals with actual literacy, so uh, English language arts and uh, um, literature. Buncee is very flexible and creative, which caters to all kinds of subjects, but especially uh, the ELA literature-related subjects. Uh, and we can, we'll see a few of those examples um, as we go through this presentation. Buncee also helps cultivate 21st century skills, which, as you know, is extremely important for uh, college and career readiness. So Buncee allows students to uh, put together different kinds of multimedia, but actively think about what kind of multimedia they're putting together and formulating a full, um, a complete presentation to uh, to create some kind of digital shareable content. So they really have to think about what their message is, who is their audience, and how they want their message to be delivered. And that comes in handy, as we all know, uh, in any career path you take, and uh, whether you go to college or not. So cultivating 21st century skills. Um, by creating content, students actively become creators and sharers, not just consumers. So instead of, even if they're creating something that they would like to share uh, across social, instead of just consuming content through social media, they will be actively sharing content that they've created. Um, and also, finally, Buncee is a web-based tool, which allows students and teachers to access Buncee anywhere, anytime, as long as they have the internet, of course. <laughs> um, so Buncee's, uh, Buncee can be used on tablets and iPads, you can create on your web browser, on your tablet or iPad, just the same as you would on your, um, <coughs> on your uh, laptop or computer browser. Um, and then it's also, Bunces are accessible on your phone. And although you can't create on your phone, you can access your Buncee, and it will be uh, proportionate and everything will look um, very sleek and clean. So that is why you should choose Buncee. But how is Buncee being used in the classroom? Well, good question. <laughs> um, there are tons of different ways Buncee is being used in the classroom. <coughs> and I have to say, sorry, I'm a little sick. <laughs> um, but I have to say, one of my favorite things about working at Buncee is the ability to learn from educators. So like I said, Buncee uh, was originally created 
as more of a communication tool. And then as we have had the privilege of um, working with different educators, we really are amazed to see the different ways that educators are using Bunsi every day. And it really inspires us and makes us smile and uh, keeps us really happy. Um, so here's a few ways that Bunsi is being used. So digital stories, so students can easily pull together different kinds of stickers. They can record their voice and add narrations and give voices to characters and really bring their creativity to light. Um, ELL lessons and assignments. Uh, this is, Bunsi is great for uh, language learning as you can record your voice and what we find is that a lot of uh, students will record their voice, play the recording back, and hear that it is not what they were going for, and then we'll re-record it. So we found that in a way, Bunty allows for students to um, correct themselves and to really capture the exact uh, lesson that they are trying to achieve for that day. <laughs> um, multimedia presentations and research reports. Uh, Bunty's ability to quickly and easily combined all different kinds of multimedia, makes Bunsi the perfect tool for um, full, uh, in-depth research or, uh, presentations and projects. It really allows students to um, easily combine multimedia, but then also get a little creative with it and create amazing presentations. Um, journals and book reports, uh, poetry projects, holiday projects, and much more. And when we say much more, we mean much more. We're always, always I'm amazed at the amazing creations people are uh, coming up with. <coughs> so to go into these lessons or into these uh, examples really quick, I just want to show you a few. Um, this is a <coughs> research report that some a student did on um, coming to Istanbul, and and uh, it's called a Mega Cities Project. And I believe this link, all of these links, should be in your live binder if you want to check them out. Um, obviously, you can see that <coughs> each of these items has a link embedded to it that will take, if you click on it, it'll take you outside to a different resource where you can read more about it. There's a little uh, audio clip embedded in here, um, and that is uh, a sound file from SoundCloud. Um, and as we continue, we can see that there's different, uh, there are different aspects like animations and text. Um, and in the original one, I believe this is recreated on the new canvas. Um, and in the original one, there was a voice recording where the student goes through her presentation and explains, uh, explains the slides in, in more depth. This is one of my favorite examples. This is a uh, science fair project from uh, a student named Elizabeth. And I really, really, really love this example because it shows how uh, in-depth students can go in their own uh, projects and creations. Down here you can see that there's a little play button on your, um, on a sticker and it's, <coughs> this allows students to record their voice. So this is a, a recorded voice combined with a sticker. And then the student basically puts themselves into their presentation. So you can see here that she included a, a YouTube video. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see this. <laughs> but she just explains what she's doing and, and how she's doing it. Um, and it really, really, really uh, just allows students to dive in and, and kind of put themselves into their project in more ways than one. Um, and then on top of that, it, what we found is that it helps students uh, understand and conceptualize the fact that what they are creating is not just a, um, a presentation about what they've learned, <clears throat> but it's also uh, representing themselves as individuals and basically adding to their, to their resume of life and, and what work they are able to achieve and um, how they're able to achieve it. So I really love this example, and it's really fun and interactive. So feel free to check that out. Um, and then the last example I wanted to show you before I move on is um, a ELL lesson about the four seasons. 
and you can see that you can quickly create a short little lesson um, with uh, I think this is actually a Spanish uh, lesson, um, but you can create a short little lesson with all different aspects and uh, really create some kind of stunning presentation. So let's see. Okay. <laughs> so now as we move on, uh, one of the biggest ways we see students use, uh, or we see people using Buncee is digital storytelling. So, like I said, this is uh, a perfect way to use Buncee and really to take uh, take control of all the different functionality you're offered. Um, and you can see that in a lot of these, you'll see QR codes, and we have a lot of teachers using. Uh, there's a QR code feature on Buncee, and we have a lot of educators using QR codes in ways I could never imagine. Um, one teacher actually created a walking museum where they had different parts of uh, different dates marked out on a wall, and then they created Buncees to coordinate with those dates, and they had the QR codes to the first slide, uh, and they printed out the first slide of the Buncee with a QR code, and then whoever was walking down the hall that day could scan the QR code for that date and get a whole lesson on that date right there in the hallway. So it was really cool. I love that example. Um, and then you can see that this really um, captures all the different kind of functionality and really uh, showcases student creativity. Um, one of the last ways I'm going to share how Buncee works uh, with you guys or a use case for you guys is um, a communication tool. So like I said, Buncee was primarily originally created for um, communication. And this is one way that we see teachers and, um, and educators using Buncee. Uh, so if you are creating, you know, a, there's an RSVP uh, functionality that goes along with, uh, that goes along with, um, that goes along with Buncee and you can easily uh, use that and it allows teachers and um, uh, whoever creates the RSVP to send out uh, update emails, get notifications when people reply to your email so that's yes, no, I'm coming, I'm not coming, um, and they can give a, li a little reason why. And you can attach uh, a Google map address so that people can see exactly where the event is. So what we found, uh, we found that educators find this very useful when it comes to field trips, um, parent-teacher nights, back-to-school nights, things like that that really kind of involve the parent <coughs> and, and community and they have a fun way of interacting with their audiences using Buncee. Um, as I said in the very beginning, Buncee comes along with a classroom assignment and uh, management dashboard. And this is what it, it looks like. Basically, all of your students are in a student pool here. And then you can drag and drop your students into different classes <laughs> and then different groups within those classes. So this comes in handy if you have um, you know, if you have a full classroom of 50 students and you have a English class and a math class, uh, different subjects, you can group them accordingly. And then within those classes, you can group them, you know, if, if you have students in your class who uh, are ESL learners, you can group them into a, a specific category um, and then tailor each individual assignment to those students. And Buncee also has a very I think it's my favorite um, functionality. You can copy a Buncee and then quickly edit it. So if you are creating a lesson and you know that you have students who uh, kind of need a little bit more uh, visual stimuli, then you can send uh, a Buncee back out that has, you know, extra, uh, extra images or a video or, or something of the sort, and then students can access that and kind of have a more tailored experience to their learning. Um, and then when you send out an assignment, you will, students have the ability to uh, reply with their own Buncee. So you, when you have an assignment and somebody submits it, you'll see that uh, the assignment will turn green and you can go into that assignment and see all the students who have submitted. You can grade their projects right from there or you can go to the actual Buncee and grade it there. Um, and then you can also see what students are creating on their own. So we uh, actually find that students a lot of times, and I know this may sound like a crazy 
fancy story, but it is true. Um, we have a lot of teachers sharing with us the fact that um, their students will create bunsies on the weekends. You know, obviously it's not a um, a lesson that they're creating or or anything like that, but they will create some kind of bunsy and send it to, uh, send it to a friend or to a parent or something like that. Uh, and you can see all the bunsies that they create in their bunsy uh, file. Um, we also have an app called Buncee for EDU, and it just won the American Association of School Librarians Best App for Teaching and Learning for 2015. Uh, so we're really excited about that, and we love the way that people are using the app. Uh, it's a native iPad app, uh, iOS, so make sure you guys take advantage of that. It's free, totally free to use. Uh, the functionality isn't as broad as it is on the site, but it is great for um, K to three specifically, and there's a lot of fun ways that you can use it. Um, we have teachers using it kind of like individual whiteboards, so that really works for uh, for uh, one to one schools. <laughs> and then we have a lot of teachers using it for um, digital storytelling as well. So make sure you guys check that out. Um, and then recently we've had some great press that we're really happy about. Um, he, like I said. We're uh, given an award for one of the best apps for teaching and learning from the American Association of School Librarians. Uh, we were included as one of the eight apps to start uh, to jumpstart the new school year from ISTE. Um, we went to ISTE this year and we loved it. Had a great time. Met a lot of fantastic people, and we are always at different conferences and events. So if you are ever uh, heading to one, just uh, check us out and see if we're, if we're coming as well. Um, and you can see here too that we were uh, we just had an article uh, written about us in Discovery Education, and it's basically for Buncee and student creativity. Um, the last slide I'm going to show you guys before I pass it off to Steph is uh, this slide, and it's just the main important part about this is that we are use we need one more state in the United States to come up uh, with 50 states. And we are in 72 countries, and that was the last time we counted. Um, but what I really like about that is that uh, we are a tool for all kinds of education and all kinds of educators, no matter what country you're in, no matter what subject you teach. And we really love connecting with everybody and getting to share our tool with them and hearing their feedback and trying to build a better tool for everybody. Um, so we're always. Uh, we're always happy to hear any anything you want to tell us, uh, provide us any feedback you'd like, and um, we absolutely would love it. So I'm going to pass it off to uh, Steph now, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed my part of the presentation, and I know you will enjoy Steph's. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye. Um, I'm so excited to be here and honored to be a part of Bunty. Um it truthfully has changed my teaching life. When I found Bunty, I was at um, a technology conference, and I went and I saw this really cool looking little presentation, and I thought, oh my gosh, I have to look at this. And I went in to uh, the, tw the presentation, it was like 30 minutes long, and I literally left speechless, and, and just knowing that this had to be included in my classroom, I then won a free your subscription to it, uh, and from there, I just haven't looked back, and I've just, it's all I use in my classroom, to be honest. Um, it's definitely enhanced everything I do, not only for me personally as a teacher, but also for the, the kids, and it's really, like Chris was saying, they're not just consumers anymore, now they're active participants, and um, it's just it's just really amazing. So all you educators out there, that are looking for a way to engage your students and to reach them through your teaching, this is the way to do it. Um, okay, so if you would, I'm going to screen, I'm going to share my screen right now. Here's a look at a fun CI I created. I know that um, Chris had mentioned, or I saw, I'm not sure it was in the chat or if something Chris mentioned, but a virtual portfolio. So I made this fun C just to give you an idea. Actually, I made it for a Board of Ed. Um, presentation that I took some of my students to just to let our Board of Education know what we were doing in the classroom. 
Uh, so this is what we presented. I created this, but I created this with my students sitting by my side and their input. So they chose everything for here. And we like in third grade to take our learning out of our seats and around the world, but of course we are confined to the four walls in our classroom often, unless we have access to a bus, which we don't, or we definitely don't have access to an airplane. So this is a little bit of what we did. We weren't able to go see author Marissa Moss, so we brought her, in, brought her into the classroom. You can see here my students are sitting, talking to her via Skype. Well, in order to present to the board everything we did, we put this into our Buncee. On the next page, you can see that we took our learning out of the classroom when we went to the Willy Wonka Chocolate Factory. Um, you can see all the cool animations that my students had me put in here. And it really helped them process what we did as we were making this. It took us back to everything that the curator of the museum told us. And we were able to share everything that we remembered and spoke of and learned about. Now, this is a really exciting thing that we did taking the learning out of the classroom. We did a Time for Kids webinar, webinar and we put it all on Bunsy. But the neat, my, most, uh, my favorite part about this is that we went down to Antarctica on Time for Kids. There you can see the kids taking notes. This led us into an inquiry-based research project in which they researched themselves, Antarctica, and then they created their own Bunsies. So this is an example of a Bunsie created by a student. Um, where I assigned them on Buncee what I wanted them to do. I set the guidelines for it and everything that I expected from them. And I sent them the assignment via Buncee and we, they worked on it. They did their research, they put it in a Buncee and then they sent it back to me. I was able to grade them, give them feedback, tell them they weren't finished, have them add to it or, or not depending on where they were at and then we emailed it to their parents and we shared it. We also uh, researched Jane Goodall. We had another webinar with Jane Goodall, and we did the same process here. So we took our learning to Africa this time, and then they created Bunsies to follow. That was really exciting. So not only was I able to get them motivated by a Buncee that I made that is actually included within all the information that, that you guys will be able to access on the, um, on the Blackboard, but also a little bit of it is right here, so but you'll be able to see more on your own. So I was able to create a Buncee for the students and then they presented one right back to me. So in my classroom, and I know through Buncee, we like to use Buncee as both a verb and a noun. So we like to Buncee, but we also like to create Buncees. You'll hear the word quite often in our room. We participated in the Global Read Aloud. This was from last year. This I used to introduce the Global Read Aloud and also have the students create Global Read Aloud uh, pages that we put into a group project. So that's part of what I presented. Uh, that's how we took it out of the classroom. Here's another example that I'd like to show you of what I did during my language arts lesson. This is 20 Odd Ducks. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have read this story. I wanted the students to notice the difference in the punctuation, but what you might, I'm not, I don't know if you're going to be able to see here, you can see these little um, icons. I didn't put them into stickers at the time, I just have these on there. So if you click this, which I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear, but you'll hear a student actually reading these sentences. And the students were reading these sentences based on the punctuation, so how they had to change their voice. And we were using the picture clues so that they would be able to get more meaning and figure out what was going on with the story. And I can't even tell you how this changed the read aloud for my students. It's a very funny book and they get the point when the teacher reads it, but when you put it into a Buncee and all of a sudden they're the readers, it takes on a whole new meaning. This is this year's Global Read Aloud, which I actually just presented to my students yesterday and I can't even tell you the enthusiasm that was in my classroom. I created this for them to show them. In it, like Chris was saying, you can embed YouTube videos. So I was able to put this video in there. Uh, the Global Read Aloud that we're reading is the year of Billy Miller. So they were able to watch this, get really excited, and then I was able to show them the students around the world that we'll be reading with. Now all of this, I of course could have accessed someplace else on the internet, but look how amazing it looks for the kids. 
how motiv motivated were they when they saw this airplane flying across, they had just watched the video, and look at all the students, all these Stanford students all over the world. So needless to say, they were quite excited. Then I was able to show them where our pen pals are in Venezuela, or our book buddies, I should say, reading buddies. So once we get up and running with them, we're going to, the students will be sending them bunsies based on the questions that we create for each other from the books. Oh, that was just the end of it. Sorry. Okay, there's, let me see. I think they have one more. I had mentioned earlier the Jane Goodall. I mentioned earlier the Jane Goodall. Give me one second. I'm so sorry. I know. So sorry. Home on a weekend. There's also children around. <laughs> Not students. Sorry about that. Um, this is the, the bunsy that I created for them earlier, like I said, with Jane Goodall. And this is how I was able to introduce it to them. So you can see I also linked in videos that got them pretty excited. Um, one last thing I just wanted to say, a couple of ways I'm going to be using it, using it in my classroom moving ahead. I had each reader create a reading timeline for themselves. So they're going to be finding pictures of books that they've read. Just a couple of ideas. They're going to be just talking about themselves on the bunsy of themselves as readers from, you know, their earliest reading memory until now. They do book reviews. They um, practice fluency, like Chris said. I seriously cannot even begin to list all the different ways the students are motivated to use Fancy. We do our science projects on there. I've seen their level of thinking and their level of creativity increase leaps and bounds since we've added Fancy into our classroom. They are constantly looking for a reason to use it themselves. And I have to say, I'm learning more from them than from anybody else. So that's all I have to say. But uh, if there's any more questions, you can type it in the chat, and I'll try to reply. So thank you. I did capture questions as they went along. Marie answered some of them. I was so I'm, I may be asking questions she's already answered. Um, for edubuncy.com, should we sign up with our school email? Uh, yes, signing up with your school email uh, will definitely help, and that will keep uh, Buncy uh, going to your school-related email instead of your personal email. OK. Uh, can you share Buncees with parents in an easy way? I, I remember you mentioned something about emailing them. Is there an easy way yeah, to share so, them? Of course. Um, so Buncee is all about communicating and sharing. Mm -hmm. So we have a ton of different ways you can do that. Um, for parents, it's probably best just to email it to them. Uh, and then you can email up to 250 people, uh, 250 people at once. Um, so but you can just simply uh, send it out to a whole class if you want, a whole class of parents. <laughs> mm -hmm. What's the difference between using the, the Chrome app or using the website, say, on a Chromebook? Uh, what do you mean? Uh, well, there's so the difference between using the Buncee for EDU app, which is an iPad and iOS app, uh, mm -hmm. and the web browser is that the web browser has a lot more functionality. So there's a lot more, uh, uh, a lot of ways that you can um, combine different kinds of multimedia, whether it's videos, images, PDF files, all that. Um, and on the app, it's it's very catered to K to three. And that is more about stickers, uh, animations, and creativity, and things like that. So you don't really need the Chrome app. Um, I would suggest it depends on what your what your goals are for your classroom. Uh, if you want, uh, we have a lot of people who prefer the app because it's something that is just easy uh, to do on their one-to-one -one, um, uh, iPad, and uh, it's just easier for them. To, uh, it's easier for their students to use as well because there's not so much functionality. So mm -hmm. they, can, they have a limited option to what they can do. So right now it's only on the, the Apple? Yeah, it's only on Apple. iOS. <clears throat> okay. Um, is SoundCloud 
I, my, this is, this keeps moving. Um, do you, you need internet access to share what's created too, correct? Um, yes, you need internet access to share what is created. If you have the link, you can, uh, again, you need internet access for that, but you don't necessarily need to share if you have that link. So there's a couple ways that you can share Buncees, and if you um, allow people to just access your, your shareable link, then they can access it uh, anytime, and you don't need to email it to them directly. Uh, if they just have that link, they can access it that way. Okay. Let's see. Can Buncees be bundled if students create one each? Can, can the teacher then put them all together? Uh, yes, definitely. Um, it would work a little, uh, basically you would be taking uh, screenshots like JPEGs and then uploading the JPEG, which you can do uh, multiple uploads at once. So you can upload them to a Buncee and then just add in the links to those individual Buncees and you can compile um, you can compile your bunches into one Buncee. Uh, and we actually do that frequently. In this Buncee alone, there were at least five, six other Buncees. And then I know in Stephanie's part, um, there is a couple of linked Buncees as well. So you can kind of enter a Buncee vortex. <laughs> Vimeo is definitely included. So we have the ability to search through YouTube and Vimeo, and that came from a lot of feedback uh, <clears throat> that we gathered from a lot of educators. Uh, so keep that in mind. If you guys have ideas that you want to share with us, we are always open to it, so please tell us. Um, so Vimeo is available. Uh, Animoto is not available yet, um, but that's something we'll definitely uh, look into. What about other video formats? If you have, say, MP4 videos, can they be included? Interesting. Uh, you, I, actually, you cannot upload a video. You can upload MP3s and mm -hmm. sound files, but uploading a video uh, on the code side, it takes a lot, uh, and it takes a lot of storage. Okay. So we're looking into that, um, but currently that's not available right now. But that's definitely something we would love to be able to implement. Okay. If videos are created in quick time and uploaded to Google Drive, can they be shared? Hmm. Um, I'm not 100% sure, but I would have to lean towards no. Mm -hmm. I know that we have a lot of uh, teachers who upload their content to YouTube and then share it that way, but I've mm -hmm. never, I, yeah, that's how I would go about that. Yeah, they can be uploaded to YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, Buncy work on Android tablets? Um, Buncy works on tablets, yes. Uh, right now, uh, for like a native app, it's iOS only, but it works across tablets and across um, different devices. So iPad, tablet, uh, laptops, um, desktops, whatever. Again, as long as there's the internet connection. Uh, yes, yeah, so as long as there's an the internet connection. Right. Correct. Does it cost more to send a bunsi to 250 people as opposed to five people? Um, so it doesn't cost any. Uh, the 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 pricing feature um, uh, the pricing feature depends on what uh, the amount of students you have, and so it's based off of students. Uh, and the free account uh, you can send emails up to 10 people, I believe, um, at once, and then. If you want, you can resend it out to another 10 people and then another 10 people uh, versus on the uh, plus account, you, ha you can send it out to 250 at once. Um, so there's that little, uh, um, little difference in, in uh, account type. Right. <laughs> okay. How is Buncy different from Glogster? Good question. Um, so we, uh, we love Glogster and we're compared to Glogster a lot, um, but I think uh, we're different in a, in a, a couple different ways. Um, first of all, we're slide based and Glogster is kind of one long poster. Uh, so you can, uh, honestly, uh, you can do a little bit more with slide based than you can do in, in a poster sized um, uh, canvas. 
But then also Buncee is the, the user friendliness is a huge aspect that we focus on and we've taken a lot of time to uh, really understand and, um, and help people. Uh, and we've collaborated collaborated a lot to, to get here. So the user friendliness is another aspect. Uh, and then on top of that, um, there's just uh, a lot more creativity and uh, in-house design elements and we keep adding to them and adding to them. And uh, it's definitely something that we really pride ourselves on. Is there a rate, cost rate per classroom or is it based on the number of students in the classroom, saw a price for five students versus 250 students in the chat. Um, yeah, so the way we, um, the way, and we are kind of, um, we are kind of changing uh, down the line where we're uh, building an enterprise system, but it will all still be based on the number of students per uh, account. So mm -hmm. the way that will work is, um, and the, I wish I knew the algorithm, but I don't. Um, so it varies from like two dollars to three dollars per student. Uh, it will never be more than three bucks, but it's it's in between there. Um, and then <coughs> there um, uh, there are sorry, I got distracted. Um, <laughs> uh, sorry, what was the question? I totally lost my train of thought here. Cost. Sorry. <laughs> How is the cost based? Okay, okay, yes. Uh, so it's based per student, uh, like I said. Um, and as you go up, it, uh, the price per student decreases. And then, of course, I see a lot of, uh, I'm getting distracted by the chat over here. Mm -hmm. And I see a lot I have, uh, you know, a request for coupons. And that's definitely something um, on, on this Buncee presentation at the end. I don't think we got to it, but at the end of the slide, there is an option to uh, every when you sign up, you can sign up for a free trial. But we also included a um, option to sign up for a 25% off um, coupon code. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you guys are interested, just click on that um, link, and it'll send you out to a form, and you can sign up. And we will get back to you uh, as soon as possible and get you guys set up with a coupon code for 25% off. Great. And I'll I see some some comments about the price being a bit high for them. Uh -huh. uh, so a coupon code probably makes it more reasonable. There's a link for a free trial for us, and the coupon code link in chat. The I think I think I exhausted the questions inside of the moderator chat that I was able to capture and with Peggy's help capture a few more there at the end. Does anyone have any questions they'd like to ask Stephanie about her uses? Oh, can parents sign up their children? Yes, parents can sign up their children. Um, <clears throat> Uh, and then in that case, uh, wait, I lost the chat. Um, yeah, parents can sign up their children. Um, and in that case, it might be better to explore um, Buncee in that case, mm -hmm. uh, since as a student, you would be creating uh, a student not, uh, not linked to a teacher account would be creating their own um, presentations and they wouldn't have to be under a student account or anything. Uh, so at that, at that um, in that case, it might be better to look at Buncee, which I would be happy to help anyone who's uh, interested in exploring that route with. Um, otherwise, edu.buncee.com is uh, perfect. And would the original Buncee also be the uh, Buncee of choice for an individual teacher without signing up the whole class, or would you still suggest edu? Um, that's a good question too. Uh, I would suggest EDU um, uh -huh. because there are on the EDU site too. There's a lot more educational. There's a lot more educational resources. So we have um, a resources page that's full of, and th these are all links that are in the live binder. Uh -huh. uh, so you'll see uh, links to 
the uh, EDU resources page that has a ton of Common Core uh, examples and different um, different lessons and creations that teachers themselves have made and wanted to share with people. And then there's also like the galleries page, which will show um, a lot of different examples, uh, EDU related examples, and the EDU sites just have a lot more to offer. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I also wanted to say that this link that I'm adding into the chat box now will allow you to, if you, you can go down to the bottom of that link, uh, of that page, and there's a classroom calculation tool. So again, I said, <laughs> I don't know the algorithm to the pricing, but I can see here for $100, it would be uh, $240. Uh, for, for 100 students, it would be $240 for the year. And um, I understand that a lot of people are, are kind of saying, you know, uh, these prices may not be uh, affordable to them. And at that point, <clears throat> I would just like to say our main goal is just to have people creating. Um, so the free account offers a lot of, uh, a lot of functionality as well. Um, so that might be a route that you would like to explore. Or if, you're just, if you are interested in the free account, you don't get the classroom management dashboard. Um, but if you're interested in uh, getting that, just email us. So my email is chris.buncy.com, and this is also in the, um, uh, in the Buncy presentation. Just mm -hmm. email us, and we just want to um, get people creating and have students really exploring their creativity. Um, so we would just love to uh, find, a, find a way to work with you um, no matter what. So just email us, and, and we can figure something out. Great. And also, Paula mentioned that this could make a good donors choose proposal. So there's another resource for, for teachers. Again, thank you so much, Chris and Stephanie. Um, I think everybody enjoyed learning about Buncee. And um, those were the questions that I managed to capture. I think we'll head to the closing slides now. I'll pass along the mic to Peggy to uh, thank you. That was great. I'm so excited to finally know more about Muncie, and especially through the examples that Stephanie shared with us, because that's what brings it to light for me, and I'm sure it does for you, too, so you can really see what it actually does, and you'll be able to check all those out in the live binder later as you have time to explore. Well, thank you for your presentation. Thank you all for joining us. We hope you'll come back every Saturday that we have a show and join us. And next Saturday, we're really looking forward to a presentation about Minecraft EDU with Laura Briggs, Kim Harrison, and Trish Cloud. I can't wait for that. October 17th, we have Jennifer Garcia joining us. She's going to share some things about digital storytelling, and especially related to green screen on iPads. And then October 24th, no show, because we're all going to the Dan Fall Virtual Conference. There will be lots of great presentations that day, so I know you won't want to miss that. And then the end of the month, October 31st, we're going to have our October featured teacher, who is Marcy Hebert, and she's going to be sharing all about maker spaces. So I hope that you'll join us for those, those upcoming sessions. Remember, Connected Educator Month has started right now. It's October, and it's underway. There are tons of great offerings every single day. And you can sign up for their calendar and actually get the events you choose onto your own personal calendar. So browse through those, select the ones you're interested in at times you can attend, and add them to your calendar. Uh, and this is just a slide to remind you about the Denfall Virtual Conference, and there is a link for that in our live binder if you'd like to register and learn more. The reason, it's all free, but the reason you want to register is to get the links for the sessions and to be able to sign up for the sessions you want to go to on that Saturday. 
And I'm going to turn it back to Lori to just wrap this up quickly. Thanks, Peggy. The Learning Revolution Project is Steve Hargadon's latest endeavor. He's gathered together all of his PD resources in one place, including host your own webinar. So you can sign up for a Blackboard Collaborate room, make your event public, and your session is free. You can nominate a featured teacher at this site. You can nominate yourself as well as the featured teacher for the month. When you exit the session, the Classroom 2.0 Live survey should open. You can also take the link from the chat box or the tab in the Live Binder in the Resources area. When you take the survey, at the very end, you can request a professional development certificate. It prints your name out. Uh, when you enter your name in the field and then the following one is for an email address, make sure that's a personal email address. School email clients tend to block this. You don't get it into a school account. The archives are in iTunes U in a video collection and audio collection. They're also in an RSS feed. If you have a feed reader, you can get show archives that way and of course as well as the full recording that you can get to from the Classroom 2.0 Live website. Special thanks again to Stephanie Suter and Chris Del Basso, to Steve Hargadon, founder of Classroom 2.0, Teacher 2.0, Future of Education and the Learning Revolution, to Weebly.com for providing our website, to Blackboard Collaborate for a webinar platform, and to everyone who participated in today's show. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you.